So what effect are all these changes in the world, globalization, demographics, societal changes, how are they going to affect work and how are they going to affect corporations? Well, over the last four years, I've had the pleasure to be running the Future of Work Consortium, which runs in uh, London, in New York, in Mumbai and Singapore. And as you can see from this great uh, group of companies, uh, we've engaged people from around the world uh, and indeed from different sectors. And that's important because we are seeing quite big sectorial differences in how companies are thinking about the future. And with that group of executives, we've both brought them together virtually through our own platform, but we've also brought them together physically. And the questions that we've asked them are about what you believe to be important and how are you responding? And I want to talk a little bit now about some of their responses. The first thing to say is that human capital is becoming an increasing focus of organizations as they think about the future. And by that, I mean really the triangle of human capital. I mean, organizations are thinking about how do we build intellectual capital? That's why, for example, you're seeing a plethora of open innovation, jams, virtual platforms, which are a way of building wise crowds within an organization and really leveraging its intellectual capital. The second is around emotional capital. How do we really build resilience into our organization? And that's very crucial because what we know is that technology naturally leads to the fragmentation of work and it naturally leads, com combined with globalization, to 24-7 working. So the simple truth really about the future is that potentially every one of us will be under more and more pressure. And what we know is that people who are under a great deal of pressure are less productive, and more importantly, they're less innovative and creative. And so what we're beginning to see is organizations focusing very hard on how do we really contain and develop the emotional capital of our organization. So for example, you'll see British Telecom, uh, building flexibility arrangements for almost all their employees. You'll see Tata Consultancy Services out of India uh, working really hard to make sure that every single one of their employees is able to work virtually. You'll see Cisco uh, using its telepresence as a way of, again, bringing more flexibility into work. And we see that as a very important area. So uh, intellectual is important, emotional is important, but the third aspect of this human capital triangle is how they're building social, the social capital of the organization, how they're building relationships. And th the challenge that we face there is as more and more of the, the future is about collaboration, that means that you have to build high levels of cooperation in your company. Now, cooperation is easy to build when people are similar to each other, they're in uh, the same nationality, they're sitting next to each other. But of course, most of the work that you're now creating doesn't have those factors. And so what we're seeing is organizations are having to be very, very thoughtful about the way that they build this very important aspect of human capital. So what are the risks and opportunities that we see from the research that we're doing with companies all over the world? Well, well I want to identify two that have really come out when we ask companies about what's important for the future, but what aren't you doing so well? The first is open innovation. And by open innovation, I mean the capacity of an organization to pull in ideas uh, both from within its organization, but indeed from its whole ecosystem that could in include its supply chain and indeed could in include its consumers. Some companies are brilliant at that. You know, Lego, the child's playing uh, tool, uh, has completely changed itself by including kids in its innovation process. P&G has done the same. And what we're seeing is organizations are realizing that technology is providing an opportunity to really widen the innovation net, but they're struggling to know how to do it. 
The second area of risk I wanted very briefly to talk about is generational cohesion. And what I mean by that is that when you've got these different cohorts of generations in the work, each of which who have rather different ways of working and different attitudes towards work, then the potential of conflict is certainly there. And some of the companies that we're researching are saying that they're seeing that conflict. And in particular, they're saying that some of the ways that the more traditional generations are working is creating conflict with a young, the younger generation, Gen Y, who'd rather use more technology, who don't want to have a culture of presenteeism uh, and want to have different ways of actually producing. And we think that that's a potential real conflict for an organization. I want to finish by talking very briefly about the research that we're doing now. And it's in fact the basis of the book I'm writing right now. And it's about the role of business in society. You know, one of the things that's very apparent when you look at these challenges uh, that organizations face, particularly the environmental challenges and the inequality challenges, is that actually organizations can play a very important role in the world in terms of how they leverage their core competencies out into the world. So, for example, we are seeing that with Standard Charter Bank in terms of how they're leveraging their um, extraordinary scaling capacity and the fact that they've got branch, a branch network right the way through Africa and right the way through Asia. They're leveraging that to try and cure world blindness. And their hope is that within the next decade, they will have touched millions and millions of people. And in fact, they're already doing that. You can see that in the way that Randstad, for example, is partnering with VSO to help uh, find people who want to work with VSO. And Randstad, as a recruitment agency, is able to le leverage its capabilities. So I want to finish by saying that there are enormous opportunities and also challenges ahead of us. And that's going to require us, I think, to do three things. First of all, to build resilience inside, particularly in terms of those three areas of human capital. Secondly, to anchor ourselves in our communities and indeed our supply chain. And thirdly, to be able collectively to address some of these huge global challenges that we see arising. Thank you.